Hey, what's up guys, Jason here, back at it again with another video. So, what the tech is going on? So I bought a scooter just for kicks, pun intended, and this is from the brand Xiaomi. This is the Mi Electric Scooter Pro 2, Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 Team Edition. Wow, that is quite a mouthful. I have a lot of thoughts about this electric vehicle, and this video will let you know if this can be the future of your daily commutes, or if it's just an expensive toy. We all know that the traffic congestion in the metro is really bad, and we're always trying to find ways to reduce it. This enables more modes of transportation into the scene, and when these these new options produce zero emissions, we should think long and hard on how we can support it. Scooters kind of fall in an awkward category for being too fast on sidewalks, but too slow for the road and even some bike lanes. But getting from point A to B can be really fun with the right conditions. The Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 Team Edition is built on the same platform of the Xiaomi Electric Scooter Pro 2, but this one offers a different look. And if you're into F1, which is the most prestigious motorcycle sport for those who don't know, you'll recognize right away the famous black, gray, and teal colorway of the team. The regular Mi Electric Scooter Pro 2 is a matte black finish with red accents around the front wheel. It looks a lot cleaner, but after seeing the Mercedes AMG edition in person, I definitely prefer it. It looks a lot more premium than the regular version, but having a Mercedes logo definitely put a bigger price tag. But do take note that they offer the same functionality. Most scooters on the market right now are for kids. So when I unboxed this scooter, it was a nice surprise. Not too big, but just enough for a rider that's a little under 6 feet tall. This is no kid's toy. Unfolded, the scooter measures 113 centimeters long and 118 centimeters high. It's also quite hefty, weighing in at 14.2 kilograms. The scooter supports a maximum of 100 kilograms, and if you're like me, who's almost borderline that weight, you might want to take note of the weight of the backpack you're carrying if you plan on using it in your daily commutes. Now to kick things off, now that pun was definitely intended, and to start up your scooter, just press on the power button. It's located at the base of the control interface. This single button also controls the mode selection and for turning the headlight on or off. The display shows the current battery state via these white bars and also shows your current speed. The display is very easy to read under a variety of lighting conditions. It is clear and bright. The scooter has a thumb throttle with a nice steel accent and is located at the right handlebar. After kickstarting your scooter, the speed is controlled by your thumb. The further you push, the faster you'll go. To slow down, just ease off the throttle and pull on the brake lever on your left. Unfortunately, the scooter has no cruise control, which I really wished they had because after holding the throttle for a while, you likely want to maintain that speed for a period of time and holding it can become cumbersome. To stop the scooter, there's a familiar brake on the left handlebar. This works similar to what you see on bikes. It features a disc brake with serious stopping power and also an electric brake. The brake lever on the left takes some time to get used to because personally, I prefer two brake levers. As with most electric vehicles, this scooter features regenerative generative braking, which you can select from three levels in the Mi Home app. This means that when you lift your thumb up the throttle, the scooter will slow down using some regen braking and send some of the kinetic energy back to the battery, giving you some more time to ride it. Just a quick pro tip, if you want to take advantage of this feature, make sure to use some downhill routes. Stepping on the scooter, each person will likely have a different stance and pretty much there's no wrong way. Personally, my left foot is at the front and my right foot is positioned sideways at the back and bending my knees slightly adds stability while riding. The deck is an okay size with my size 12 shoes but it isn't wide enough to have both of my feet facing forwards. I could try but that kind of seems dangerous. It has this rubber mat with grip studs to make sure that you wouldn't slip. Most likely, you'll be using scooters during daytime but there might be times that you may ride your scooter during sunset or even during night. For added safety, this scooter has reflectors all around. This will reflect light whenever headlights will shine upon it, ensuring you're able to be seen in the dark. And to ensure you can see your way through the streets, there's a headlight built in front of the control interface. This can be turned on or off by simply pressing a button. The light is bright enough so you can see the road ahead. 
and if you're going at top speed, this is really important. And because of how bright the light was, I didn't feel that I needed to add an auxiliary light. There's also a rear light that blinks when you press the brakes, or you can set it to always on via the mobile app. Located at the handlebar is a bell to get the attention of upcoming pedestrians or other motorists. It's a classic style bell that is widely used and can be seen on most bikes. But this bell has another function. When you need to keep or transport the scooter, simply unlatch the two-step clip at the bottom of the handlebars and fold it down. Then, this bell handle latches onto the hook located on top of the rear wheel guard. Once folded, you can now carry the scooter using the front stem. At a little over 14 kilograms, I really wouldn't carry the scooter around long distances, but might help you up some stairs before unfolding and scooting away. Xiaomi could have designed this clip to be an ugly extra, but I'm glad that they integrated it onto the bell. It's one of those things that just makes sense. There's also a kickstand, which is strong and robust. It supports the scooter to stand on its own while charging or just waiting for you to scoot off. It's strong enough to support my weight, but I don't think that it's meant to be used that way. When it comes to buying an electric scooter, there are two things worth looking into, range and speed. On a single charge, the amount of range is the determining factor on when you'll use a scooter. Xiaomi packed a massive 12,400 mAh battery which drives the 300 watt brushless motor located at the front wheel, which can give you up to 45 kilometers of range. And with that range, it is way more than what I'll use daily. It may even last me a few days before I need to charge it. There is an included charger when you need to charge. Most people would unlikely drain the battery of the scooter, but if you do drain it, the charge time will take at around 8 to 9 hours. Realistically, I do think that the people who use scooters for their daily commute would connect it to an outlet to charge each night. Those who use this casually, however, may even last them a whole week before recharging charging is required. When it comes to speed, the scooter is no joke. It offers a max speed of 25 kilometers per hour, which is enough to get you to your destination a lot faster than walking. There are three speed modes available. You have pedestrian, which tops out at 5 kilometers per hour, and you might want to use this while pushing your scooter in heavily crowded areas. D or drive, which can reach up to 20 kilometers per hour, and probably use this mode first while learning to ride this. And lastly, you have S or Sport, which unleashes the full 25 km per hour speed. And when it comes to riding on different terrains, the 8.5 inch pneumatic tires will take care of most of the bumps which avoids the need of suspension. But let's face it, the roads here in the Philippines are not the best. And if ever you get your tires punctured, there is a spare tire inside the box. There is a lot to love about this scooter, but it does have some cons. When scooting along most roads, the scooter is smooth and quite responsive. But when you ride along the not-so-smooth parts, the shaking can be felt in your skull. But not to the point that you'd want to get off your ride. But during those times, I did wish that the scooter has some sort of front suspension. Another issue is affordability. Some people can buy secondhand mopeds or motorcycles for the price of this scooter. While the objective of going electric is to be clean and green, when it comes to functionality for price, even an old motorbike would offer many pros such as going higher speeds, additional passengers, and even the ability to ride in any weather condition. It's clear that you're paying a premium for the name and design of this electric scooter. And given that design is a very personal thing, only you can decide if it's worth it. The Xiaomi Mi Electric Scooter Pro 2 Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 Team Edition costs 34,990 pesos. It is essentially the same as the Mi Electric Scooter Pro 2, minus of course the Mercedes AMG branding and design. The Mercedes name does come with a steep premium price tag, but despite how much I like this design more, there will be a lot more budget conscious consumers that'll opt for the Mi Electric Scooter Pro 2, which costs 27,599 pesos. Now, to answer our question earlier, if this can be the future of your daily commutes or if it's just an expensive toy, my answer would be that this can become part of your daily commutes. 
And with the rising prices of gas and of course maintenance for your cars or motorcycles, going electric can have a lot of pros such as lesser costs to maintain it, you can practically take it up to your office and don't pay for parking, and many more. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Again, it's me, Jason. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.